It's Caleb and welcome to the hashtag Who This Podcast. Brooke, we have a celebrity we in the do. house today. We do. I'm super pumped for this. Steve Willis, Commando Steve, for the few people, uh, the international listeners that don't know about Steve, run us through his bio. Yes, so today on the podcast we have Steve Willis, who is also known as Commando Steve, and now that is not just a stage name, he served in the military for 10 years and from there Steve made his media debut on The Biggest Loser and has also starred in Survivor Champions vs Contenders. Steve now runs Get Commando Fit Boot Camps and is an advocate for mental and physical well-being, so we Welcome to the podcast, Steve. We are so stoked to have you. <laughs> oh, it's great to hear you guys. Thanks. It's a nice rap. <laughs> we always look after our guests, that's for sure, on the rap, but you deserve it. You thoroughly deserve it. You got quite the quite the resume, um, which is which is amazing. Like you've been in the public life for such a long time. But let's uh let's start with a deep question. What's something, one thing that people wouldn't actually know about you? Oh, oh that people wouldn't expect looking at you. Yeah. Oh, I'm a big softy. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> Goes deeper beyond the tough stickers. <laughs> oh, like I, it's, I don't know. It's not that I've tried to be overly tough. Um, I think a lot of that kind of comes through from just an upbringing and, and time in the army. So you become your environment to a degree. You don't... From, from, from an observer point of view, you don't particularly see yourself as uh, as how others might see you. And I think from a very early age, I realized that certain parts of who I am, you know, are quite soft. So, you know, yeah, you just, you just think that that's how others are perceiving you when really it can be, you know, completely the opposite. And now that I'm a bit older, looking back, you know, quite maybe regimented and a certain amount of intensity came with just what it is that I did. So, yeah, all in all, my kids, I guess, and those that are closest to me know that I'm just a, a big softie, really. Totally. And in being a big softie, what is something that you do in your spare time that brings you joy? What's your guilty oh, pleasure like, even? Well, that's, yeah, guilty pleasure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cuddling up to teddy bears. Oh, yeah, or cuddling up to teddy bears, <laughs> having a sleep, cuddling my pillow. Yeah. Um, oh, just like, just chill out. Yeah, like spend time with um, with the kids. Um, in summer, going to the beach and just chilling. I, I could sit there for hours. Um, you know, I, I, I love what I do as a job and I guess it... Um, it kind of is there and everything that I do, that whole health and well-being side of things is it's not something that I just, you know, I put a shirt on or I, all right, I'm going to work for this brand as such. Like it's, it, it flows through, you know, the start of my day to the finish of my day, um, weeks in, weeks out, months in, you know, years. And it's, you said before, I've been, I've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, I think back to when I was a kid, you know, to a degree, um, it was there and um, I'm probably just a little more um, focused and, and and kind of know where I'm going nowadays to to back then yeah that's great how much um how much have you felt that your personality has been shaped by the expectations of say like a media role biggest mm. loser you kind of um, were always portrayed that no nonsense uh, kind of mentality how much how much do you feel that you've had to live up to that even though you might ne not necessarily be that as a... Yeah, it's... Um, I think it was definitely there at the start and accepting um, profile and I guess the things that come with um, that attention and um, whether that's the benefits or, you know, the things that you, you that, that are agitators. Um, yeah, the expectation can be quite um, heavy uh, at, at periods of time and the scrutiny around things. But I think a number of years ago, I came to that place of acceptance of, all right, this is kind of the role. This is, you know, you've, you've got this, this name, you know, people would always ask questions around it. You know, commando, were you really in the army? You know, what's your real name? You know, all those little things that, um, 
because you are you, you think people automatically just know it about you yeah. to a degree. And it's like, well, if you heard the name Commander Steve, don't you just in your mind go, well, maybe his name's Steve. <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> but it's, I don't know. Like, it's funny hey, how the mind works yeah. And yeah. when you hear things from others. But you live and breathe who you are. So so you, wherever you go, you automatically think that um, people can – well, how they perceive you is is in that way and it can be completely different. And, you know, a lot of the time nowadays I forget about stuff and I, I'll just be walking through the shopping centre or, you know, some random place and it can it can take people by surprise. It's like that um, they're, they're blown away that, you know, you might be sitting at the beach and your Speedo is right next to them and, and <laughs> they're just... They, they, they can't quite comprehend, yeah. you know, and I'm a human being like anybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be, I'd probably think the same if Brad Pitt sat down beside me too. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely had its ups and downs, but you're yeah, coming to terms with expectations of others and, um, you know, how I perceived those expectations to be and how, how I felt I needed to live up to those things. And, and I realised that I just need to be myself and to to relax into that. Um, And I've spent quite a period of time, well, um, because The Biggest Loser and and the role and the character that I, to a degree, played on that um, brought with it, you know, ideas that people um, hung on to. So when when it came to doing things, training sessions uh, and the like, there was apprehension and, and probably you know fear, a fair amount of fear and people are like oh I need to get fit before I train with him or with you if they were talking to me directly it's like man that, oh, that's why I'm in the game like at the heart of it and you know, I say I'm a big softy is there's that compassion and that empathy and it's it's wanting um, what do you say more or better or um, you know maybe slightly different to what people are already living or experiencing and and again a number of years ago a book that i read um by eric greeton's uh resilience Mm -hmm. it um it had in there a phrase which i kind of remembered in my own way and that is pain suffering and fear is real but it's not unique and they should be the things that unite us or unite humanity not um, they're not the finger pointing like you know my pain and suffering is more or worse than yours and you know it, it, it's it, we almost wear ours like a badge of honor and it gives us we almost feel entitled and a right to be a certain way like mm. because I've I've experienced the suffering I'm allowed to be angry I'm allowed to be oh, yeah. the victim well the, well the victim yeah mm. and um, when really they should be the thing the meeting point for us to help um, find solutions and 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 come together and be kinder and be more peaceful and like and 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 they're the hardest things to do like in a world that is constantly in flux you know I'm talking the universe let alone humanity um, it, it, it's it's challenging and again you know being a bit older and having lived through certain things and had certain experiences you start to gain some wisdom and insight into um, into the workings of things. And, and again, that's your own insights and wisdom. But um, you know, just trying to be as graceful as you possibly can. And um, at times, it just wears you out and you want to go to sleep. At other times, you know, you want to tear it apart and put on some you know, heavy metal music and go after it. But yeah, uh, yeah all in all, um, it's, it's, it's been great. Mm. That's one thing that I've noticed from going to your boot camps is that everyone in the boot camps does feel so empowered. It doesn't matter how fit they are. They Mm. all tap into that resilience mindset that you speak about so often. So how does it feel to have a community now that is just like practicing literally what you preach? Yeah, like it's, I think first and foremost, you know, around that is providing it and or creating, not providing, creating a safe environment. And what I mean by safe is so that people can express themselves in whatever way, the, or, or who, 
you know, in, in, in their emotional state and being at any point in time because you get people show up at 5 a.m. So that means they're getting out of bed around 4, just after 4, you know, and, and that can affect people, you know, differently to, you know, 9.30 class in the morning and it can be quite hot, in, you know, in summer. And then you've got the afternoon classes where people have been working all day. These are all little nuances that I take into account and what we do a lot of well, is outdoors. So the environmental factors... So having that environment that, that people feel safe in and they can express themselves regardless of the state of being, that's probably the better way of saying it, the state of being that they're in mm. and just provide or, or do their best on that given day. You know, we all, in the, in the health and, you know, if you think more fitness, we're always banging on about markers and about, you know, improvement here and, you know, the measurements of this and that. And, and majority of the time, it's your willingness to just accept the circumstances as they are in this present moment in time. And this morning we had very little, um, we had very few people show up for the session. And Harika was there with me and a couple of others. And they're like, come on, just jump in. And I did not want to train. I felt like I, when I got out of bed, I'd been hit over the head with a hammer. And, um, and I thought, all right, I'll just one step at a time. I'll go through the warm up that we do. And that warm up's a good 15 minutes. And by the end of the warm up, I thought, all right, I'll just stay. It was a kettlebell workout. I'll just stay a bit lighter today. And again, a lot of people will will talk themselves out of it because A, they can't lift the weight that they normally lift. Oh, they're not feeling, you know, how they would normally feel when they work out. And it's all these things. It's just accepting those little friction points and getting over yourself. And to me, that's resilience. Like, and when you can do that time and time again, you know, your your mental state and, and your well being because you're willing to take on challenges, however small they are, they attribute to the bigger picture. That's that's where it's at. And at the heart of it is that word, it's acceptance. And how hard is it a lot of the time to accept things for how they present themselves? You know, we get angry, we get agitated, we get frustrated, we whatever it might be. And then we find it hard just to deal with ourselves, let alone anything else. And then we project outwards. Yeah. Yeah, all of our stuff. And, and sometimes that can be pretty ugly. Yeah, and and it's, it's, it's not so nice. It's really crazy as well how all of our stuff can be so big, but then like those environmental factors that you spoke about, like mm. you could have someone beep at you in the car on the way here and you're like, oh, why were they yeah, being like yeah. that? And that just that's just the straw on the camel's back and it's all over. It's that trigger, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the smallest thing. And yeah. um, and that and that comes about, you know, acceptance and, and, and the like requires awareness or mindfulness. You need to be present. And that's something... I guess humanity's going through, you know, currently, and you're seeing a lot of it in social media and 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 in the media and the like. Is this whole um, kind of Eastern mindset around awareness and mindfulness and being present? You know, you even got the Eckhart Tolle. There's a gr- lot of um, Zen or Buddhist Buddhists as such that that um, or, or yogis that are on Instagram and the like. And you know, I follow a lot of them and. Especially the Westerners who've who've been practicing it for a long time, they put it in a language and in a way that the Western mind can understand. Whereas when you're trying to interpret in your own way how it's being presented from from someone who's lived in an Eastern culture their whole lives, it can be quite challenging. It's like it, it, it's it's like a riddle to a degree, and and a lot of the time you've got to live that riddle. And, then you, and it could be weak. You could hear something and it could be weeks later and you go, ha it was that simple. Like really, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been turmoil in your head. You yeah. know, it's just like you're trying to figure it out and then it just lands with you and it's like, oh, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. I, I want to go, go deeper on that. So I'm hearing a lot of words like compassion, empathy, mm, mm. Um, awareness, self-awareness, mm. uh, all really powerful words. And you spoke about um, how your kind of understanding of strength has has, has shifted over the years as well. So mm. you, you, people see you as like the strong guy physically, right? Uh, and also even mentally. But how much of mental strength uh, and true strength is actually uh, compassion? Compassion for other people, compassion for yourself, self-awareness of yourself, mm. uh, empathy for others. I'd love you to talk more about kind of uh, what how you really see as you've gotten older what true strength what true strength is well i guess a lot of true strength is to 
It, it fluctuates, yes, in intensities to a degree and, and where you need to invest um, more time and energy. And, and, and quite often where we invest a lot of our energy isn't necessary. And we can find ourselves being quite reactory, to, uh, like a reaction to things. And that chews up a lot of our energy. So then we've got nothing left. There's no bandwidth. So then that those uh, reservoirs of, of what we deem as, you know, required for strength, whether that's in a physiological sense or, um, you know, in our mental state, well, we're just worn out. And then it's, it's recognizing that. And it's like, all right, a bit of time out here. Um, and we all need that. And you can't be a bull at a gate and, and, and delivering or expecting high output all the time. But unfortunately, humanity, you know, we expect that of ourselves and of one another. And I even find that if I, I use or just my observations in, from working out and, and with a workout, the action is to lift weights, to, to run faster, to do more rounds, to do more reps. And that's what training and, and exercise is about. And then there's, well, there's the depletion in the, in, in the physical form as such and mentally. So then how do you replenish that? So the stretching and the mobility and um, you know, meditation or taking some time out, going for a long walk on a beach with no shoes. Oh, I'm just being silly now. But, um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm awful I'm just drowning. Being, I'm just, loves long but, uh, walks on the beach. <laughs> yeah, there, and, and the grounding as well, no yeah. shoes on. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Um, again, then people try to apply output. So if you're holding a stretch, people try and push themselves into a stretch when a lot of the time it's, it's like tending to a garden. You can't, you can't be rough with it. You've, you've, you've got to be gentle. You've, and um, you've got to encourage and you've got to nurture. And with a stretch, um, time is your friend. You know, so whether it's stretching your legs or you know, doing some... Um, yoga stretch where you're holding for a period of time and it's it's just following your breath in and out and recognizing that you hang on to a lot of, and a workout can create a lot of tension and agitation in your body and then just calming yourself and releasing that and um, encouraging teaching your body that it can be both um, there when uh, it, it can be there for you when you need the output but when you don't to be chilled to be relaxed. You don't need to carry all that tension and that stress. It's a long way to answer a question, eh? But um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm loving it. Again, it, uh, things for me are being. Uh, I, I don't. I don't particularly invest a lot of time into trying so hard to focus on any one thing. Like it, it, it comes and goes for me. Some days. You know, I can even with talking, I'll speak quite well and I'll be able to say things in in very few words and get the point across. And other days it can be more drawn out. And I think that's therein is the essence of being human. We we um it you you can be challenged at at, at the turn, at any turn, um uh, about anything. And um being okay with that is also uh, I think a bit of secret sauce as well, because if we're not how we think we should be, well, then what are the thought processes and the emotions? And then you can beat yourself up real quick. Yeah, so true. I mean, it's why I asked the question because it's strength is so multidimensional, right? Mm. Um, we look at a bodybuilder and say they're strong. Um, and oftentimes they're strong in so many other dimensions because they've uh, had to... Have, create the discipline they've had mm. to create the routine they've had to create the habits um but so much of strength is around the mental side what you're talking about like compassion empathy for others um understanding other people's situations understanding yourself and having self-awareness over what you were just saying like being able to push yourself or not push yourself um from we do our research and i've listened mm. to a few podcasts that you've been on as well in those podcasts, you talked about your story uh, in the infantry mm. and it was at a very young age uh, that you joined. And I'd love you to talk a bit more about that. And I'd love you to talk about, as you talk about your time in the infantry at a young age, how much of your um, th the strength that you have today and, uh, and the ideals that you have today were a result of putting yourself in a tough 
position with a lot of challenges at an early age when mm. you joined the infantry and then went on to the commandos? Yeah, and I, I guess it's it's eras in time too, and um, and expectations, and you know, having a dad who was quite disciplined and tough, so the the being shaped from an early age. And again, I was quite the softy, and he probably realised that as well, and felt that I needed to toughen up a little bit. Um, and then from high school going into the military, and and I always used to think when I observed other people if they can do it well i can do it too i never felt uh, you know I, I wanted to be the usain bolt but i also wanted to be you know the power lifter or the olympic lifter and you know the swimmer and you know like I, the cyclist i i never I, and i said it just before i never saw myself as as going after one thing and that's probably why and we no, get into no it. surprises Cross, he chose tr- crossfit, crossfit you know <laughs> and um, yeah and that's why it spoke to me when yeah. when when it kind of presented itself and i was like oh wow this yeah. is awesome but um <laughs> but but the military also did that and you know something that crossfit did adopt um was from the military and that military is that acronym uh, gpp so general physical preparedness like it's it's in the, the military pams that you needed to be um, ready to roll with anything at any point in time regardless um on very little sleep on very little food and that's how we were trained and from you know, i joined when i was 18 going on 19 and um yeah, going through recruit training which was tough because that's your first experience of the military so it's like wow what the hell is this and you know you learn the ropes pretty quick and and kind of you know figure out some ins and outs on how you can some get arounds and um then from there i went to the school of infantry and at the school of infantry you know you, you're working amongst other like-minded individuals whereas in recruit training people have joined the military first time and they might they might might not like a lot of the physical type stuff they want to go to other roles in the military that aren't so physical whereas at the school of infantry like they're at the school of infantry for a reason because that's the the job they want to do so you're you're amongst other like-minded individuals and it starts to become um a lot more focused in in what it is that you're doing and then the weeding process occurs from there as well and you know the what they're really looking at is, you know, are you trainable? Do you have the capacity, you know, both in, in, in the intellect to withstand the rigors of the job? And they need to do that because ultimately at the end of the day, the military is about, you know, service and, and I guess if you go to war, the, the, the protection or, and, and, you know, all the other kind of uh, reasons the military exist. But, um, you know, you, your life's on the line at the end of the day and you know your mates that are beside you so you've you've got to be able, have the mental capacity to be able to um contemplate that kind of and and um live up to the expectations of uh of the military i remember very clearly uh, they'd always say you're either in or you're out like you know there's no wishy-washy middle ground like you're committed to this and this is what's expected of you uh let's go and um that's those little challenges, you know, day in, day out. And, and over time, you, um, it just becomes your norm. You don't, you don't really question things or like, oh, why this? Or, you know, this again, like you just, you just knuckle down and do it. Mm. It's, um, it's very action based. You might talk about things, but then you go out and you practice it. I think, unfortunately, um, that's where it falls over in society. Like we, we, we sit in a room and we get this wonderful lecture or we, we, we have this communication around resilience and you know mental toughness and strength and resolve and all of these things, but then we don't go out and practice it. Totally. It's the practice. And you know, a great Zen Buddhist master, when asked by Oprah Winfrey, you're so calm, you're so peaceful. You're this thing, he goes, but it's a daily practice. You know, whether you want to be, you know, a Buddhist in meditation for hours on end to, you know, to Usain Bolt like, like, you know, choose your pain because it, it, it's work regardless. To sit with your legs crossed is probably harder than doing the training to be a 100 meter sp- you know, sprint athlete because it, 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 it's hard to be still. Yeah. 
That is it's so true. It's very tough to be still. Sometimes just stopping and being is harder. You just want to keep going all the time. It's hard to let your brain just sit and mm. not even think, try not to think about anything. It is really hard. Um, but in being in the military, obviously it's built that mental resilience and that, that pattern of just keep on going. You just get up and you do it. What gold nuggets can you share with us around developing that mental strength um, so that we can take that into our everyday and apply that. Yeah, so developing mental strength and, and I guess it, as an adult, um, it can be, it really can be tough because a lot of it stems from your younger years and the, the, the foundation that you're working from and the framework that was put in place um, and having others around you that, that want to build theirs as well and, and, test themselves to a certain degree in whatever um, way that is because the the like-mindedness and the energy that is that comes together that collectiveness um, encourages you you become more accountable um, to it whereas trying to do a lot of things on your own can be can be very challenging and our our own minds will sway us in a heartbeat you know from from getting out and hearing the alarm clock in the morning and trying to get out of bed. But if you know a friend or a group of people are um, expecting you to be there or, or to you know, to do something, the the willingness or the likelihood for that to occur um, is heightened. And um, other than that, it's like, oh no, I'll just I'll get another 10 minutes, which turns into half an hour, which turns into an hour. And you do that, you know, once in a week, you know, it becomes twice. And before you know it, you know, what you were trying to, to shape and mold evaporates. And then, you know, the head trauma that comes from, from that, you know, oh, I'm a failure and oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. And it goes completely the opposite way. And you see it time and time again. Oh, look, oh, it happens to me. And, you know, people, oh, you're, you're all these things. Um, you, and, and you can't go too hard at things straight away and that's looking back to the military time like things were regimented and you practiced and you practiced and you practiced whether that was weapon drills or you know every day we had to do pt physical training that was a part of the job and it to maintain that that health and well-being because when under pressure and when you're when you're exhausted our intellect um, starts to shut down because we become emotionally overwhelmed. And we all know that nowadays. Um, so trying to maintain a level of vigilance of oneself and, and how you, your environment affects you, you know, and the flow on effect of how it affects a team, whether that's a team of five or a team of 10, or it's a, it's a platoon of 30 guys. Um, you know, it, it, it's, yeah, it can be it can be again quite overwhelming at times. But yeah, that 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 daily practice, um, having uh, or, or being amongst other like-minded individuals, you know, having a mentor or a role model, especially when you're young, you know, having I think it kind of comes naturally. But as we get a little bit older, we we tend to think we know better. You know, we we have all the answers, and it's like just realize sometimes, and just try and data dump everything, and just be a beginner again. Actually, and there's a great book, Beginner's Mind, by um, I think it's Shunru Suzuki. Uh, he talks to that, like approach things with a beginner's mind and you could learn something new. It's like lately I've been showing up, you know, I run the early morning sessions and it's amazing how the pattern of the sky and the light each morning is different. Now, those that are in bed don't get to see that, you know, for the, some of the listeners yeah, and and maybe encourage yourself to do that. It's it's the, again, it's those small things. And I think before I was asked around joy and 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 um, and happiness. You know, in in my downtime, but I can derive a lot of those things and and encourage that of myself, even in the midst of hurting. Yeah, and that's the a lot of that beauty and that realization has occurred in meditation and being still with my eyes and the words of. Others like Thich Nhat Hanh, Shunru Suzuki, back to the what you were asking me before, from what I learned from the military, rolling through my head. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when uh, actually, when you spoke about the early morning sunrises, 
It reminded me of a concept called temptation bundling, which actually I spoke about on my my own personal IG a few days ago. And it's the process of um, bundling together, and, and you described it. It's a process of um, bundling short term pleasures with long term behavioral change. So an example of that is, well, you're going to go see a beautiful sunrise. There's the joy of that, bundle that with exercising at the same time and doing something that's actually going to create meaningful behavioural change around around that. Yeah, yes. that makes – yeah. And, I, so that, do, you have, some do, exa- do you have some examples of that? Because you just gave one in well, terms of the well, sunrise. Well, um, you know, even with – I bang on all the time about mobility and about, you know, um, you know the health and well-being of your joints and, and just your body and – the more mobile you are, and I guess, how do I say this? The, the less, when you're not so heavy in your own being, in your body, there's a lightness to you. And you, you just, you tend to find a rhythm and a flow um, in, in your everyday life. But to do that, you, you, you need to work on it. And again, I, I spoke about that with, say, stretching, for example. If you like to watch television, like sit in the lounge room and stretch whilst you're watching it. Like mm. whereas we tend to just plonk into the lounge chair when that knee that you complain about all the time, you could be doing some stretches that help to alleviate you know, the, the, the tension at the knees. And I know that firsthand because I've experienced all those things. I know what it's like to, to have really tight, you know, bound up muscles to – to doing a lot of mobility work, um, yeah. Well, other instances, there's 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 so many, and I guess I, I back to the challenges of of or just life in general. From when I was younger in the military, I like the physical challenges. I like to express myself um, in that way. I the intensity that I bring nowadays to to what it was like when I was younger um, is vastly different, and I I can't tend to extract and, and and push it the intensities that I once could. Um, and I think a lot of that is age, but it's also my perception of myself and a lot of the emotion uh, or the thought process and the emotion that I used to run on and how I perceived who I am Steve um, to who I am as Steve nowadays. And, um, you know, you get to that place where you're really hurting. Um, I don't feel so compelled to you know, try and have that out of body experience anymore from from pain. But I try to find myself in and amongst it. You know, there's a there's that there's me, the essence of who I am, and that hurt. And do I get distracted and attached to that pain? Because there's a lot of pain in everyday life, let alone the pain that you experience in a workout. And a lot of the pain that presents itself is the pain that's there all the time. We're just constantly running away from it. And that's what a workout teaches you is to just is to deal with what presents itself for that given moment in time. So how do I say, it's almost like you cocoon yourself. You can you can be experiencing a multitude of things at any point in time and, and knowing that joy and happiness can be there on the journey alongside that suffering and that pain at that particular point in time, I, I think is quite liberating. In coming to terms... <laughs> it's weird, <laughs> hey? Like it just... Uh, it, uh, the the power of the mind, really. You know, is it a placebo? Oh, I don't know. Like it's yeah, yeah. It's um. Well, placebo is a very important thing. Oh, like of we, course. We we think placebo is something you just throw away, but placebo is uh, you know, something that's been uh, been studied in depth for decades now, and mm. uh, and has shown that it's actually a very very powerful form of healing for the body. Mm. Well, and neuroscience, they they they've we talk placebos they they've shown that the 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 mind and you know, along with the the physiology can create um uh like some of the strongest drugs that we can be um prescribed like the morphines and that the, the body can actually in the mind the mind and the body can create them and um and then the the healing processes that can take place and uh is a dr joe Dispenza. You know, that he's a, a neuroscientist um, and he talks in depth and very well and, and puts it in language, you know, layman's terms to a degree under concepts and then they can put some practice in place around them. 
in finding that joy and cu- coming to terms with finding joy amidst whatever the, the craziness that's going on in the world, mm-hmm. is that something that you came to terms with recently? Or when you were in the army, were you still able to find that joy amidst of literal chaos? Um, maybe not so much. Again, I think a lot of it comes down to um, your interpretation of words and whether you they, they carry meaning or weight for you. Um, for example, the word love. Like, w- w- what w- what is it? You know, and it means so many different things to, to different people. And it's like strength, you know, say the word strength and ask someone to define it for themselves and, you know, the meaning around it. Um, and a lot of it is living through those those experiences and opening yourself up to it. Um, j- joy and happiness, I think a lot of that has only been things that humanity has been really focused on, you know, over the, probably the past 10 years or maybe not even, you know, especially happiness, you know, seeking happiness. And that, like happiness is here right now. Like it's just, are you willing to open the door to it? Are you are you are you willing to let it in, or are you allowing that that inner dialogue and all of those those very powerful emotions to to overwhelm it and 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 kind of suppress it and push it away? Or because uh, it's there now, if you want it. Um, so let the people know how can they access happiness. Well, you've you, you've got to encourage it of yourself. You've got to um you, you've you've got to spend time with yourself. You've you've almost like have a mantra around it. Like there's some um, things that I've taken away from Thich Nhat Hanh and uh, in a meditation that I, that I do. And you know, that meditation I can do in 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes, or it could take me 90 minutes to do if I, if I draw it out. And part of it is um, on my in-breath, you know, um, um, I know joy. Uh, I know joy is there. Breathing out, I smile, knowing joy is there, and and say the same thing with happiness. And you know, breathing in, I I know that there's pain and um, tension in my body. Breathing out, I release the pain and tension in my body. And it's I th- over time you start. It's 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 like um like hypnotherapy and and the like because in that state of state of meditation you lower that vibration and you go into the, a more hypnotic state. So you're starting to program your subconscious. And there's other means with hip, uh, hypnosis and other um, methods that can tap into and, and help reprogram the blueprints of the subconscious a lot quicker than you know, meditation. But you know, does anything good really come that quickly? Like it's, it's, it's a process of time and it's, and it's being as present as you possibly can in each and every moment because there's always something to learn and that and that in and, in and of itself can be very joyful and um you can derive a lot of happiness from it yeah. you got to be open to it a, a lot, again you asked me before about expectations of myself they're the biggest things like we have our expectations of ourselves yeah you know, our identity and how we need to present ourselves when we walk out the front door in the morning to the world and that can shut us down to a whole host of other things because we're just we think we need to be a certain way and we we build a life like i was in the you know i was a kid i was a teenager i i joined the army i was in the army i was i i i was a you know a private i i was then um they thought that I could handle the, the role of, of more responsibility. So then I was a corporal, you know, a senior corporal. Then you do the courses to be a sergeant. Um, and then I moved out of the military. So I'm no longer in the military, yet I know a lot of guys who aren't in the military anymore and they still hang on to that mentality. Hence why there's a lot of issues. You know, I let that stuff go a long time ago. As much as I sometimes it might trip me up it, you know from the subconscious and things that have are locked away and move into doing what i do and health and well-being and and spending you know, gosh it's been 2004 it's been 15 years of of doing that and then people's perceptions of me and how i perceive myself and you know crossfit and, and competing in the crossfit games and you know a lot of people don't even know that and it's not Hey, it's a great achievement, but at the end of the day, you know, that happened a long time ago. What did I learn from that and, and how can I use that to help other people is more important than the accolade. 
Who gives us stuff about the accolade? It comes and it goes. You know, so many of us chase excitement and excitement's a fleeting moment. Like deriving joy and happiness from washing the dishes, from making your bed, from polishing your shoes if you need it, from vacuuming the floor. You know, if you've got kids and a responsibility, look after them. Like, and, and, and hey, they'll agitate and frustrate you to no end at times. But um, at the same time, it, you can, um, it can be so, it, it's so beautiful. It's, it's so wonderful to, to see these little beings grow up and, and, and take their own, you know, identities and, and, um, and, and go after things that, that they enjoy and, and certain directions and, and they have their own little personalities and they, they're so different. But um, yeah, that I, I think a lot of it is we get attached to this identity and we all this effort and this hard work that we've put in to being that person. And when something trips us up or we find we can't be that person any longer, it's like our world implodes. And a great guy to listen to is, he's passed away now, Ram Das. he talks about that. And he talks about contemplating death. We don't even talk about death. Who talks about death? Because it's the biggest fear that we have. And that's what kicks in most other fears. So then when we can come to a place around death that we can be okay, as, as fearful as, as the fear, as real as the fear still will be, um, we can let go of a lot of other things. And he spent a lot of time, very, a very spiritual guy, thinking he'd come to terms with ego and, and, and the physical form. And he had a stroke in his 70s. And he said it was the best thing that ever happened to him. <laughs> you know, and he was kind of wheelchair bound. And he needed a lot of, he needed quite a few other people around him to just live each day and to get through and function. But um, just how he presented it himself. And, and he, he meditated on just being loving awareness. You know, I've tried to sit there for an hour and just roll that over um, in my in my head, just on my in breath, be loving awareness, on my out breath, loving awareness. You, you become that. You, you believe it enough. You say it enough. You you'll become it. It's you'll become whatever you think you need to be, should be. Hundred um, percent. With um, you know the words that 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 are just that tape that's playing over and over. And and the beauty is we can change it at any point in time, but it takes a lot of practice. Yeah. Our inner voice like really is so strong. It, it's insane how much power our mind has over mm. everything that we do. Even when it comes down to workouts, like you've got another four reps of a, a deadlift to do and your brain is like, no, nope, you can't do any more, you can't do any more. Mm. But in reality, you could probably do 10 more, but you yeah. just don't know it. Our brains really do um, slow us down. Um, but you mentioned before in being with the mili- in the military and some of your um, teammates who you used to work mm. with, they've come home and they're still holding on to those um, issues with PTSD and issues like that. Um, how did the military and leaving the military for you, how did your mental health, how was that affected? Yeah, I've um, in my teens, you know, I, I didn't have a very good view or perception of myself and hence why I I, I, I felt that I uh, just acceptance around things and um, feeling that I I was like at a peer level like I felt that I needed to push myself to be accepted by others and and for whatever reason you know that it probably stems back to a much earlier childhood Um but going the military and my time in the military and making a conscious decision to leave um, was quite a, a daunting time. And f- I guess for me, it was like, well, what a, what is it that I enjoy? And I and I and physical activity was near and dear to my heart. And I had a you know a, a quite a an intimate relationship with it, and it had helped me profoundly. So I thought, well, what better job to do? You know, it's kind of in parts what was required of us in the military and um so i left the military and i did my courses and started working as a as a pt and all at that point in time kind of crossfit presented itself and then within a year of being out of the military um biggest loser presented itself and the the opportunity there so there was a lot happening 
in, in a very short um, space of time. And it probably didn't leave me too much time to contemplate things. I, it, I think I probably contemplate and weigh things up I'm, I'm, and I'm probably a lot more apprehensive to go after things nowadays than I was back then. Sometimes an element of ignorance <laughs> or not knowing um, – you're more willing to throw yourself at things. Exactly. And I think that's just part of being young as well. Like you just do it and you're more measured and weigh things up as you get um, as you get older. So what are you saying? Sorry to interrupt you, mate. What are you mm. saying to your kid? Because you've got four kids, right? Mm. And um, uh, how old's the old, eldest? So she's 22. Okay. So what are you um, at a very formative time? I mean, mm. four years after you joined, the, you joined the army when you were 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are you saying to your kids? Um, around uh, decision making, around putting themselves out there in in the world, and yeah, so it's it well with if you, if you look at the academic side of things and school is you know it's it's held in such high esteem in society and humanity to do the best that they can because then you 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 don't need to know what you want to do, but the the better the grades that you get and 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 the like, you have more opportunity. You know, then if you want to go to university or make decisions to go, you know, to go elsewhere. Um, and, you know, my 22 year old daughter, Brianna, she's, um, she's doing a second university degree now. She's, she started that. So, and she wants to, she wanted to, she started out wanting to do psychology and now she's going into nursing and a whole host of other things. I think at some point she wants to do like the paramedic side of things. Um, then my 13 year old daughter she's very physical she's very much me in a in a female in a female sense she just wants to Runs win every race yeah <laughs> but um and and but but she was saying the other week how she wants to be the ceo of her own company she awesome. she so wants cool. to she wants to have a private jet because i was talking about something she goes oh well when i'm when i'm this and i'm that and i've got the private jet we'll be able to fly wherever we want i was like i looked at her i was like man you are so sure of yourself eh? it's yeah. like we got unbelievable have conversation around yeah. uh, what will give you happiness but <laughs> but so again cool. for her um and having lived, you know, well, through my own experiences, I remember when I was 38, so I'll be 45 soon. So I was, I was going on 38, having a conversation with her. And, and the, after the conversation, I said to her, do you understand, babe? And she was like, she was like eight years old. And um, you are comprehending and understanding things as an eight-year-old that it's taken dad 38 to 40 years to figure out. And and so therein is that uh, the consciousness side of thing, that elevation in consciousness, that understanding, the consciousness is expanding, and our understanding is growing, and their their ability from a much younger age to 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 grasp ideas and concepts is far better than I was. I, I couldn't even tie my shoes at eight years of age. You know, that's a, probably a far stretch, but um, you know what I mean. Like in that mm. sense, it's um. And, and, and again, we're encouraging more empathy and compassion and looking out and being more mindful, mindful not just of ourselves, but our footprint in, in, you know, on this earth, in, in the universe. And, and because we, we lose sight a lot of the time. We, we, we talk in terms of you know, the world as such, but it's, we're talking humanity. You know, we we are but a speck. You know, my uh, my five year old son had his mind blown the other day when my eldest Brianna was talking to him about Earth and the size of the Earth, and then how the sun is is it something? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a hundred times bigger than the Earth, and he was like, "Wow!" Yeah. You know, and then the distances, and then the largest star. How much bigger the largest star is to the sun? You know, and you know, five year old's mind probably <laughs> just he probably can't comprehend that, yeah. but it's it's mind blowing. I could do, and 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 again, the joy that I derive from just being present, not even having to inject myself into that conversation between a 22 year old and a five year old is is it was beautiful, you know, and that was happening in a car. And she went on YouTube and found a, a video to articulate in a way that what she was saying 
so a five-year-old could get it. I've seen that video where it just shows yeah. and it keeps oh, on zooming yeah. out. Just keeps yeah, getting bigger. Yeah. So, yeah. so then isn't so that's the beauty of, of technology. That's the beauty of where we find ourselves in humanity um, and the ability to teach the younger generations and what they're, what they're learning. I remember when my son, who's now in year four, Jack, was in year two and doing the parent-teacher interview, teacher was saying what they learn in year two now – they used the year six is only used year six is used to learn wow they they're, they're learning things that's just the rate and the expansion i believe of of our understanding like and a kid will sometimes just sit there and just look at you <laughs> and you think has this resonated with them and then you see it play out in in something else they don't particularly have the words to describe or to reply to you but they, they they express it in other ways, but you've got again, you've got to be open to it, and you've got to go into things. You know, with I'm not, you know, your eyes open, but you know, your 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 awareness, the mindfulness there. Yeah, it's almost it's like a, having the mind of a child into everything you go go into, like mm. what you were saying before, seeing everything with fresh eyes, and you just find the beauty in absolutely everything. Yeah, and it, it's there. Mm. Like I, I think of some of what we're saying every day that I look out of the, the window in our bedroom to the garden that's just out the back and the different stages that the plants are in. There's some roses and it's, you know some other little trees and the like. And you know, sometimes you think, wow, those things still alive. And then, um, and then boom, they're in, whoops, boom, they're in full bloom. And um, it's, like, it, it's just amazing how nature just... It just occurs. It's like, it, 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 and it's not yelling and screaming and angry and beeping the horn and carrying. You know what I mean? Like it's, it just, it just is. And often we look always so much into ourselves that we're only thinking about ourselves, thinking about what's going on in our own mind, everything to do with us. That it's actually about looking out and and looking at the garden. Like I don't know how long it's been since I've gone and done something like that and looked at how beautiful the garden is and mm. the rate that everything's growing it's about changing our mindset so that we can be more present and more at peace with everything yeah, yeah exactly and, and, and but there can be again there can be a lot of agitation still upset and you know certain aspects of 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 you know who we are and the things that we've got ourselves into you know over here and all right but you can put that aside you don't allow it to whitewash you know, everything else in your life. And I, I think, unfortunately, that's what happens for a lot of people. And it's it becomes very consuming. And, and again, they just they chew up all their energy and their time and they're left just feeling depleted and defeated all the time. And then they think they need a holiday and they need... No, you don't. You can have a holiday in your living room. <laughs> you know, you can have it in a... You can have it... You can put the curtains down and turn the lights off and be... In, in, you know, there in the present moment and, and everything can be like amazing. Oh, that is just amazing, Steve. You're giving us so much gold right here. But Caleb, you have something special to say? Oh, well, big announcement. If you haven't, if you're liking this podcast and you haven't subscribed to it yet, what are you doing with your life? Honestly, like hit that subscribe button, leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Uh, I can't see any reason why not to. Steve, why would they not subscribe? Oh, I do not know why they shouldn't subscribe. Exactly. <laughs> they, they shouldn't Words subscribe of wisdom. Already. Words of wisdom. And follow us. Follow us on uh, where are we? Brooke, we're all over the internet. We're literally everywhere. Any social media site. Instagram, we're there. TikTok, <laughs> Snapchat, Pinterest, uh, YouTube. Uh, while you're at it, uh, subscribe to Commando Steve. Is that your handle on all of them? Yeah, Commando Steve on Instagram, Facebook, yeah, Twitter. It's there. We're going to do this at the end as well, just to drum it into people. Because yeah. a lot of people are like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then you tell them a second time. Well, we want like, them to keep listening, right? And then they can go Oh, yeah, that's a good point. All right, we'll do that. All right. All right, back into the podcast. All righty. So we're going to move on to uh, talking about your CrossFit days. Uh, what made you fall in love with CrossFit? I mean, you spoke a bit about it in terms of the variety and all that. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, doing what we... Or doing what you do in the military and I guess the, the, the level and calibre that um, it's at, I thought, oh, I'm fit enough. I, I'll i just keep doing this. And then a mate of mine said, oh, have you seen this website, CrossFit? 
I was like, nah. And I thought to myself, I don't need that. You know, what I do already is enough. And then, um, so I didn't, I just disregarded. And then a, a few weeks later, he said to me, oh, have you checked out that CrossFit website? And I was like, mate, you're banging on about this again. <laughs> and then and, um, I'm thinking to myself, I didn't, I didn't say that. And then he actually came over one day and he was like, let's do one of those CrossFit workouts. In, and I was like, all right. And we did it. And I hate losing, right? So <laughs> I, um, I gave it everything that I had. And I think it was only went for 15 or 20 minutes. And I spent, I reckon, the next hour trying to figure out why I couldn't get out of the fetal position on the ground. <laughs> and I think a lot of people that first time in a CrossFit, they, they, they've experienced you know, those same feelings. And it's, it's like, wow, I've just had my own backside handed to me. And um, this was back in 2004 when I was, I'd left the army, you know, I left the army in May 2004. And um, that's, that's when all of that was occurring. So I, um, I started investigating more and, you know, playing around with it. And, um, you know, did all my courses, you know, to be, you know, Cert 3, Cert 4, started working in the gym and, you um, I was just following the videos that were put up from um, CrossFit Santa Cruz. You know, Greg Glassman, the founder of um, CrossFit, that was his gym, and you know some of the athletes or people that were training in there. And um, I thought, geez, I'm I'm all right at this. I was kind of doing similar times, and you know, you know, shifting the the weights that they were doing. And I started um, training my clients, you know, with that methodology. Biggest Loser came along. We started filming that at the end of 2005. But my role was quite different to, you know, the lead um, roles of Shannon and Michelle. And um, I was training Chris and Kimberly kind of, they filmed stuff on camera, but no one else knew that I was training them. No one even knew that I existed. And then halfway through the show or three calls the way, Chris and Kimberly were injected into the Biggest Loser house. And Chris actually went on to win. Um, and it, it was... Uh, that, that was a, a, a good triumph, I think. You know, it was like a little, like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got one up there. But, um, you know, I thought, wow, this, this methodology really works. And I, and I knew that it worked just from my own experiences, having done the things that I'd done in the military to, to then, you know, putting myself through the ringer with a lot of the CrossFit workouts. I was like, wow, I wish I'd known about this and was doing this in my younger years and in the in the uh, in the military because you think when I left the the army I was I was 30 and you look at you look at kids doing crossfit nowadays and there's crossfit competitions for for teenagers you know they're, they're, some of the the weights that they shift and just their work capacity is just off the chart and it's back to what I was saying about my own kids and the like before it's just it's exposure yeah like it's it's like the old Arnold Schwarzenegger days lifting 500 pounds. Like, you know, no one could lift 500 pounds. And one day someone believed enough in themselves and they did it. And then before you know it, that the second person does it. And then, you know, the fourth and then the eighth and then the twelfth. And, you know, the, it just multiplies. And then 500 pounds, what's 500 pounds? We're going after 600 now. And it's back to what I was saying about the army and surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals or, 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 or a collective group. You... you you just you would you achieve you know what was once thought unbelievable things um and that's what crossfit was for me i was like this is amazing so i uh left the gym i was working in opened up my own gym in 2008 which is still going to this day but a mate of mine that um i've been in the army with he he runs that now and i competed in the crossfit games in 2009 and um you know i did really well there like it near killed me but um that's that's when i think things really started to shift for me i was about i think i was 33 i must have been going on 34 um when i competed in the in the games and after that i was just i was toast i was just physically exhausted and again a lot of what um my operating system and my thought processes and the emotion that I used to run on to to, to compete or, or, or to even just do the workouts was from a very angry, you know, aggressive place. And um, I just thought to myself, man, I can't go through the rest of my life, you know, 
coming at things from from that place. Like it, it's just wearing me out. And I, I used to get sick all the time. Like I'd, I'd always have the sniffles or get a cold and the like. And that just means I'm I'm in that sympathetic state. I'm constantly depleting myself and I'm trying to push through it. And the body, it's like when it's had enough, it tells you, yeah. And like it'll, totally. you, you, you can't, you know, look at people nowadays, you know, more and more people presenting with um, with like the glandular fever and and then um, what is it, the where they're just absolutely debilitated. Mono. Sorry? Mono? No, the um, chronic fatigue. Well, chronic fatigue. Caleb's actually that's, had chronic fatigue. That's how fatigue. Trapega started. Yeah. So I had it between 2011 and 2014, mm. uh, which... Um, and people think it, you, you're lying, you're, you're putting it on. No, well, um, uh, I went through my own process well, of self-discovery and found out... I mean, the label is a, an exclusionary disease. That's what so I mean. So it means was, yeah. it's a doctor's polite way of saying, I've got no idea what's wrong with you. Yeah. And uh, and that destroys your hope, that destroys your mental, mental game, getting told that... You'll never be healthy again. But uh, through my own process of self-discovery and working with top medical experts, found out it was um, I destroyed my digestive system through long-term antibiotic use uh, for my skin. I used mm. that for five years, and then also lived in a moldy house. I had mold toxicity, uh, and I'm part of the 24% of the world population that can't produce the gene uh, or doesn't have the gene. Sorry, that's able to uh, produce the antibodies that help you uh, detox from um, my- mycotoxins, which is uh, what molds produce. So I uh, went through that whole it's process, crazy, but yeah. out of it, your biggest struggles, um, that's where I found high quality nutrition. My life changed around and mm. Tropica came out of it in 2016. So um, yeah, there's a lot of sick people, but it's, um, as you're saying now, it's um, it's about digging deeper as well. And it might be um, it might be a physical thing. It might also be, as you've been talking about, a mental thing or certain things in your subconscious holding you back. Yeah. I'd lo- I wanted to ask you that question earlier, actually. Um, how can people identify what's holding them back in their subconscious? And I know that's a, that's a real tough question. It's very yeah, tough. well, self awareness mm-hmm. um, and and uh, investigation. Mm. Uh, Eckhart Tolle talks about that. You know, mm. just, just because something presents itself doesn't mean that you know it, it, a lot of us how we interpret that straight up. But think of it like a signpost on the road. You, you, we're going to Blacktown, you know, and, the, and the signpost says Blacktown, but that's not Blacktown. You, you still got to investigate and go on the journey to find Blacktown. You know, it's a, it's a pointer in a direction, and that self awareness and, and a certain understanding, and you go, oh, I'm on the cusp of things, and, and there's an as an element of enlightenment straight away. You know, to to seek the path of enlightenment first, you must be slightly enlightened. You know what what degree or, or or percentage that is who knows but isn't an, an element of it that already and um knowing certain things about yourself if you can be still enough or through through your own um, experiences um have that understanding and then seek or investigate and 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 talk and listen and read um you know uh, others like Joe Dispenza or, or you know other great people out there that are that are investigating and, and using their intellect to understand to help others as as you've done through your own experiences and um, I think the more of us that do that we start to break down the barriers of of around this is you know taboo or voodoo or whatever it might be and you know the spirituality side of things and. And, and, and a soul and a being, an essence, an energy, you know, it, it, it's more widely accepted. So then people aren't as apprehensive to kind of um, move in that direction. I think a lot of us, a lot of people, we, we, hey, we, um, we, we all want to fit in. We all want to be accepted. And back to my teens, like wanting to be accepted. I felt I had to push myself and I had to elevate so that, Oh, that's oh, that's you know Steve to a degree. Oh, right, yeah, like he can he can come within the fold when really I probably could have all along. It was it was my own psyche um, holding me back, thinking that I needed to do something else to be accepted. And um, when when people pioneer and they go out there, they open themselves up to huge scrutiny. They open themselves up to being consumed by nature. 
You think of the old the explorers of yesteryear who travelled the, the world on a ship and they thought the earth was flat <laughs> and they would fall off the end. But then some still went out yeah. and did it and they did it without any technology, you know, with, you know, they didn't do it with <laughs> landmarks and, you know, imagine their skill, mm. you know, navigation and everything like that. Like I, I just, humanity through the ages has had, it's just, there's just amazing aspects regardless of the era. And, and, you know, their craft and their skill. Like, you know, we look at furniture now and antiques. You, you'll, we'll probably never see some of the, the craftsmanship that occurred, you know, a couple of hundred years ago take place again. You know, and, and hence why some of those, those items, are, 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 they can't even put a price on them. It's, it's, but then look at technology now and it's just mind-blowing. Like even sitting here in this room with all this, you know, these lights and the cameras and the, the tele, but it's just our norm now. Yeah. Like, and, and to kids, you know, I think of my own kids, like this stuff, like I still question some of it because I, you know, didn't grow up with a lot of it. So some of it, it's still quite foreign, but now it's just, it's, just, it's normal. Yeah, it's like when the first iPhone came out and um, Steve Jobs showed like sliding the mm. the slide to unlock and the crowd's reaction, everyone was like cheering. They <laughs> thought it was the most unreal thing ever. But who would know now that you can like unlock your phone with your face? Like if we had told them back then that that's what you mm. could do, they would not have believed it. It's like technology just yeah. is developing so fast. So, so tapping into, you know, tapping into your subconscious, uh, I think it requires... You know, a willingness and, 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 and a desire to, to know more about yourself and, and, and what makes you tick and, and understand that you're not just this physical form. This, we, we are everything. We open ourselves up. We've got the universe on our side. You know, we don't, we don't need to pretend. You know, and honestly, well, it's, it's just, being, just being born and, and, and being a human and, and, and being able to breathe and you know, a part of what is going on is special enough, but that, they're not the messages that we, that, we, um, that we relay day in, day out. So then people think that they need to really toil and, 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 and be something more. Mm-hmm. But... Um, yeah, you know, I think it'll shift, it'll change, and I think humanity is getting to a place now where we are with technology and the like that um, that we, uh, yeah, that we 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 our energy and our time and our effort can be um, better spent on on um, being in a way that um, that is more graceful, that is kinder, more considerate, you know, and, and more at peace. Because we're using a lot of technology and stuff in, in, in an archaic way. Like, yeah. really, do we still need to be fighting wars and doing all this? Because it's just a flex of muscle, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. we can't use our words and compromise and come to a place that that enough is enough and we can all share when there's, there's enough for everybody. And um, so then we just use the might of the military and the like to overwhelm and to acquire you know, it's it's no different to tribes fighting, hmm. except we're using technology that's extremely destructive. Like, look where it's going with drones and all of this other type of yeah. stuff. On a and, and and one drone, it learns and it can pass through a network and data and and, and trillions of other you know millions of other drones if they're made can it's there. It's locked away straight away. Their their, their ability to learn is a hundred times at least greater than uh, or faster than the human mind, and it's void of emotion. Yeah, well, that's the yeah. that's the scary thing that's about the AI. Scary that's the scary totally. thing about AI. AI. With um, I mean, Elon Musk has warned about this as well. Our, um, uh, I mean, it's a double edged sword. It's a massive one in terms of what we can actually do with AI for good, but uh, in the wrong hands. Uh, and there's always going to be wrong hands when it comes to technology. It's one of um, uh, it's exponentially more destructive than what we are capable of at the moment. So there's, there's some great stuff out there by. Um Tom Campbell, he was a physicist for NASA, and I think he wrote the book uh, My Big Toe. And, Doesn't and, sound too physics. And, 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 <laughs> well, yeah, but he's very much. And, and Bruce Lipton, is it, have you heard of Bruce Lipton? One no. of the, the, he was one of the world's leading biologists, and he talks, and he kind of came up with um, 
with the epigenetics. Mm-hmm. So, so the gene, and everyone's like, oh, but it's in my genes. And obviously there's the effect of that and, you know, the hereditary process, but also the epigenetics, the expression of and the blueprints, and he, he articulates it very well. Mm-hmm. Um, the ability he, to change great. the genes. Yeah, yeah and, um, but he talks about, you know, every, every cell in our body is a brain. Mm. It, it receives and emits... Um, you know, energy and, and, and the environmental factors and how we're, we're perceiving things, you know, with our mind and the like. And um, he talks about what the, the human body is something like 70 trillion cells to make the human body. And for, for, for the human body to take form, well, they've got to work cohesively. Yeah. You know, then what's cancer? So what's humanity doing to itself? Yeah. And we all bang on, oh, but there's too many people on the earth, too many humans. There's 7 billion of us to 70 trillion. If one human being 70 trillion, 7 billion is not a very big number. Mm. So, so we can work cohesively. We can get along, but we've got to want to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. A little bit more uh, self-introspective awareness needed by everyone to, uh, to see the love in everyone. That's for sure. We're um we're gonna go into a new segment, our favorite segment of every <laughs> podcast. So yes, it's spirulina shots. Uh, Steve, at the start of today, you said you've dabbled in spirulina before. So I've got a story. Oh please, tell Mate, us. You, you know, people say you know Steve, you're hardcore. You're this, you're that, blah blah blah. Well, I I, I have done some dumb things, you know, with that <laughs> mentality. Yeah. And, and rush things. Yeah. And one day I tried to rush having spirulina without water. Oh, oh no, no. Like I, 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 I was in a rush. I opened the spirulina, got the teaspoon, put it in my mouth <laughs> to then dr- and then grab a oh, glass no. of water rather than spend that extra 20 seconds of stirring it in. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and those that have had spirulina know how fine it is. Yeah. Yep. And, and so... It clumps, yeah. So you put it in your mouth and it clumps, but it creates this kind of surface that's that the holds that fine, almost mist of spirulina in. Mm-hmm. So was, I had it in my mouth. It was okay. But as soon as I put the water to it, it broke it up and I kind of inhaled at the same time and it like ended up in my sinuses. <laughs> and, then oh, it, no. and, and I, lucky I was over the sink. And man, I vomited spirulina no. everywhere. It came out my nose. It came out, and uh, and the people that were in the kitchen at that point in time with me couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> yeah. they're, like, they're like, "I'll show you." Oh yeah. my god! Don't, um, don't go doing snorting spirulina. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. It <laughs> was um, oh, it, yeah, it it. it well, look, we're going, we're going pretty hardcore today. We're doing spirulina shot. Now, for those playing along at home that don't know how it tastes, so we know it's not something to be putting up your sinuses, but for taste as well, you, you want to be mixing it in a smoothie because it tastes like creek, and when you add water to it, it tastes like creek water. Um, <laughs> and our, our spirulina is actually a lot tastier than a lot of them out there because it's grown in a certified organic indoor facility with its own water supply, uh, heavy metal tested. It's one of the cleanest spirulinas on the planet. Uh, so what we've had to do is really like chunk it up. Like it's a, it's a solid amount of spirulina in there, a bit of water as well. There's, there's some solid ratios. But spirulina, you were taking it because it is one of the most badass superfoods on the planet. I yep. also want to know what your, your rest of your, your supplement game looks like and especially during your CrossFit days. Mm. Uh, before we get into spirulina shots, wh- yeah. what were you kind of taking during your CrossFit days and uh, what did your diet look like? Yeah, my diet was... Um, well, back then I, I followed the zone principles. So essentially yep. it was a ratio and a breakdown of protein, carbs and fats. Um, and... Uh, the, that carbohydrate source that I was taking in, oh, it was it was primarily vegetables and you know salads and fruits and and the like, and trying to reduce a lot of the you know the the uh, the bread, the rice, you know the pasta and things like that. You know sweet potato, yeah, great, and, and that kind of manifested itself, um, you know, in the whole paleo you know way of things. Um, but again, it was more about that protein source and the, and the fat source, you know, that recognition recognition that you know we we tend to um well working optimally 
the body burns fat as its primary source of fuel because we're aerobic mm -hmm. beasts, yeah. Mm -hmm. And having that that um, that extra bit of energy for when you need to push hard and that intensity in that sense. But um, you know, nowadays I don't really get hung up on it. Hey, like I think I think it creates a lot of unrest for people and a lot of it, a lot of friction points. And I think the stress around everyone's different opinion and and you know, there's a lot of educated people out there, but let's not forget that we're humans mm. and we need to eat. And and ultimately I think deep down we all know um, the things that we should or shouldn't be consuming. And but nowadays again we're we're a fair way down the track where um, you know, with what we've exposed ourselves to, um, you know, our, our children are paying the paying the price. And I was a child once as well. And where I see now that I'm older, intolerances to dairy and the like, I'm actually see, I see them in my in my kids. Like, and it took me until I was in my thirties for it to really have an effect on me. Like one of my daughters, if if she has ice cream and things, I'm like like like. IBS, yeah. bloating, all that. Yeah, yeah. We have Whereas... so, so many customers. I mean, obviously, we do plant-based proteins. Mm -hmm. um, we're not a vegan company, but all of our products are vegan-friendly. We just mm -hmm. make them as accessible to, to everyone. They're gluten-free, soy-free, all of that. But So we get a lot of people that come from mm -hmm. that kind of background of food intolerances mm -hmm. where it's... Um, where, uh, where they take our products and we get hit up every single day in customer service like, wow, I can actually take a protein powder for the first time in my life that doesn't bloat me and make me feel sick and is actually given back to yeah. me. So, yeah, where, whereas I think, uh, again, output. If we look at output and humanity's like, like obsession with it, to sustain output, we need to, we need to take in. And um, I think a lot of people tend to take in a lot more than they need, but a lot of what they're taking in is void of nut the, the nutrients. Yeah. Hence why they're constantly taking in because mm -hmm. the body, it, 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 it's a smart machine as such. It, 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 and um, it, will, it will keep asking for more until mm -hmm. it kind of, you, you, you hit that bell, that ding, ding, ding. You know, it's like, all right, I've gotten my, my fill on that. Whereas, again, we, we realize nowadays that you actually don't need to take a lot in, but if you're taking in, um, nutrient dense so foods um, you, you don't need to consume a whole lot but then also being mindful of your output now if you're a crossfitter or you know someone who enjoys that you, you're going to have to eat a lot differently you've got to eat to, to or, or, or consume what is required to be able to for you to be able to participate and do well at what it is like a power lift is going to consume something completely different to to a, a crossfitter, you know, to mm. a footballer, to a tennis player, like it's so true. And um, you know, if, if you're if you're a yogi and you know someone again that likes to, you know, meditate and be very chilled around things, well, you don't need much at all. And um, you know, I, I, when it comes to supplements and things, like I, I, I don't I don't honestly have an issue with it. Like, do your investigation. Um, you know, be your own, I guess, guinea pig as such, and. Um, and play around with things because some things, you know, will work better for you than others. And don't take what uh, someone or others say as as gospel. Like, you try it out. If it works for you, implement it. If it doesn't, get rid of it and move on. But don't try and do ten. Try ten different things all at once <laughs> yeah. because yeah. which one works? So true. It's all it's all so individualized. I love that. Like, listen to your body. And even when you touched on like the importance of nutrient dense food, it's like, it's why Tropeka exists, like convenient nutrient dense food. It's why we believe in certified organic so much as well. Like um, food is so devoid of nutrients compared mm. to 50 years ago. And it starts with the soil quality. Mm. Monocropping, industrial farming has created a soil quality that's been stripped of um, like a, a crazy amount of nutrients. And it's not unless you are, are doing certified organic practices that you are, are maintaining soil quality in a way that, uh, if you eat that cucumber, if you eat that um, sweet potato, it's actually got the nutrients in it that we've lived off for thousands of years. But and and and, and again, back to everything that we've spoken about today. You know, our psyche, our mental health and well-being, and our perception around things. You know, the the, the gut is the second brain. Mm. Like, so if you improve the gut's well-being, you you hand in hand, you mm. improve you know, the thing between your two ears, your brain as well, and just your overall 
well-being in that sense. And, and, and that can have a, a profound effect on your perspective and just life in general. I love that so much. Yeah, your gut-mind connection is, oh. I'm pretty sure, one of the strongest from your brain to any other organ in your body. It it's well, so at, important. Yeah. Again, like, like I lived in that sympathetic state, fight or flight, for a long time. And I, and I know like it, you, that, that um, feelings in your stomach and, you know, just, um, how do I say this? Um, like with, with, when your immune system is, is depleted and you, you, you're constantly ending up you know, sick or not, not like sick, sick, but you just, you get run down very easily. Yeah. And I get, I, I, my, a shift in my perspective, um, has been the greatest, um, change in my overall health. Mm. And, and then you tend to become more aware of the things that promote health and well being. And, and we all, we all need food, you know, we all need, you know, air. We and we all need um, water. We need we need those all that fluid intake. Well, speaking of that, we're uh, we're going to get a bit. Of, we're going to get <laughs> no, a bit of fluid segue. intake here. <laughs> I know. Um, so, Brooke, you're you're going to do the first one, aren't you? Oh, yes, you I am. You want to explain the rules of the game? I didn't even do that. Yeah, so we're going to ask you a question. We've dug through your Instagram and we found some posts that you've made. We're going to ask you questions about it. And if oh, you nice. answer correctly, yeah. we have to do a spirulina shot. But if you get it wrong, you have to do one. All right. <laughs> and we'll save them. It's a, it's a communal event. So we've got oh. four questions. We'll save mm-hmm. them for the end and we'll do the shots together. Yep, right. Yeah, and, we'll and do them all together. You can film it as well for Instagram. So I could end up getting all four wrong and I'd have to have all that, four. You that's, could. That's the goal. Oh, that oh, is that's the goal, the goal it says. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, we'll go with this first post. So it's a workout video that you posted on Christmas Eve. Um, you're down at where you do your boot camps mm. and you're doing two movements. What are they? Oh, it was on Christmas goodness. Eve, so I'm helping you with that. Christmas but... <laughs> Eve last year, right? Yeah, 2020. Okay. <laughs> What's that? It's four months ago. Mm. What is it? Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Christmas Eve. Was I doing the work? You were doing it and you're on the grass? Yeah, so... Uh, this is the difference between when we got female um, influencers, celebrities on and male mm. ones. Males forget yeah. their Instagram like two hours later. We're yeah. like, oh, okay, that post is done. That's that's yeah. compartmentalised. Whereas a female, they'll remember, <laughs> they'll remember 2013. <laughs> I remember we Well, there was rowing in that workout, but I don't know if I was rowing. I know the group was, and then mm. um, I had them doing like a, um, um, like a rope run, and um, we got to put that, a countdown timer. He's and just, they had to, he, and they had to do, and they had to drag um, like uh, weights and stuff around the oval as well. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, was you were doing? doing a deadlift and burpee over bar. <laughs> and for those playing along at home, you can check out our inst- uh, our, our YouTube. We'll have um, have the the image shop on the YouTube. Oh, one shot over to Steve. <laughs> Steve, we'll actually give you the one that's uh, least filled to begin with. So yeah, we'll be nice. We'll be nice. All, All right, right. it's going to take on the second one, which is um, yeah, that's uh, question two. All righty, so we're going back to 9th of January, twenty twenty one. It's going to end badly. <laughs> It's a carousel image. You're working out. So three months ago, you're working out and showing off some new brightly coloured shorts. The first shot is a boomerang and the second is a normal photo. What piece of equipment are you using? And remember, you're showing off brightly coloured shorts in January this year. Oh, there's two. There's one of two. Was I in the garage or the backyard? Are we allowed to say? Uh, I feel. Um, <laughs> I feel no, because if I just say the garage, you've got or the backyard, you've got one piece of equipment probably in there. No, I'm not. The brightly coloured shorts. Look, you, you're doing. There was another you, person in a, it. I'll give you a big yeah, tip. Yeah, it, it was a, a dumbbell. No. No. It's an exercise oh, bike. I knew it. I was like, I if we say it's in the garage, he's going to know. I thought it was the tutti frutti one with the yellow, uh, the yellow <laughs> shorts, which is the backyard. Uh, you've, uh, yeah, it was the, it was the biker. Oh. Damn, that's two to me. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, this could this. end At least you're going to be super badly for you. Great for us. Super healthy after this, Steve. <laughs> All righty, we'll jump into the next one. So this one is from the 10th of February, so we're getting a bit more recent. Yes. Um, okay, it's a promo shoot for The Biggest Loser. So you've 
kind of done a throwback. Oh, yeah. And it's a picture of you with a quote. Do Never you know? Give it up. Yep, yep. He got it right. He got it right. He, I'm that still was in the, the clear. I'm happy. This is good. <laughs> no. <laughs> one to me. Look at that juicy one for you, Brooke. All right, last question. Perfect. Oh. We don't need no draw here. Let's go 3 1. <laughs> All right. That's another carousel image from 27th of October, 2020. Uh, one image is you in a suit. And the other is you in your workout gear. Oh, Garmin. What was your caption? It's one line. <laughs> what was the caption? It's a pretty it's a pretty strong caption. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Oh, like I can remember okay, that. I'm gonna help you out. <laughs> Mate, that was posted. Don't help him. Don't no, help that was him. posted last year, but man, we did that 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 promo thing years ago. Yeah, yeah, but the the the, the post on it, the the line is pretty oh, it's a good mate, line. I have no Recollection. I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you, only because I, I secretly want a bit of spirulina. I'm going to show you the. Um, I'm going to show you the post and cover the caption. So you definitely. <laughs> no, I'm not so going to remember. So you it. definitely remember the post. Oh, the caption that I put up. Yes, yeah. the caption you put up. Yeah, yeah. No, so I remember. No, it's a, it's a awesome. line from a movie. If that helps. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or from a TV show. Okay. It mentions something to do with your last name. No, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you three seconds. No, I don't, uh, I don't. Uh, what, what, what are you looking at, Willis? Did I put that up? <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at, Willis? <laughs> correct me if you are. Uh, correct, me, right back. Correct, <laughs> correct me if I'm <laughs> wrong, Brooke, but a woman, a woman and, I'm, and I'm stereotyping here, but you'll spend like a long time on captions, right? I spend way too long on captions. Yeah. <laughs> a guy, you probably like put that up in eight remember, seconds, right? I'm embarrassed that I even wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I thought it was gold. I like it. You got the even the emoji with the the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So the eye emoji in there. Oh, well, look, I'm just love got, it. This is the first time. Caleb ever. will take one. Oh, this, I thought this you were going to take one for the team for him. Spirulina history. Spirulina shots history. I have not had to do a um spirulina, uh, shot. spirulina shot. So the good news is I can um I can film. Should I yeah. film um. Rather than on Instagram stories, mm. I'll film on your camera. Yeah, go on the camera. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and I'll just alrighty, you ready? Yeah. So wait, 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 wait. Um, Get this out of the way. Oh yeah, of course. Alrighty. All right, so great news, guys. We're doing spirulina shots here. We got Commando Steve in the podcast studio. It's been an awesome podcast so far. We're halfway through, well, more than halfway. And the good news is, for the first time ever, I don't have to do spirulina shots. Three, one to us. Steve, Commando Steve has three spirulina shots to do. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stand over and uh, watch you guys. Let's get you in few. Uh, All right, you ready? Three, two, one. Go. Oh, creak. Come on, go fast. Go fast, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> two down. Last one. Woo! Nice. All right. And most important thing, you got to smile to the camera. Show those teeth. Oh, oh lovely. Green. Brooke, you barely Ew. look. Oh, you got a bit of your car. That's it. All right, nice. Oh, amazing. How are those three shots, Steve? Yes, the taste lingers. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> does. It definitely does. All right, let's jump into our final mm. questions for the podcast. So what are your future goals for yourself? You've obviously had a massive career so far. What are you looking at in the future? Well, with what we're doing at the moment with um, Get Commando Fit is expanding on that. Um, got a few ideas around that uh, and just like, yeah, again, it's nothing concrete or, or, you know, the direction or focus. It's, there's a couple of, a couple of different things, but really it's, it's good to just be standing after, um, after COVID because a lot of what I was doing was very media orientated and um, a lot of corporate work, and that evaporated um, during COVID or because of COVID, because you know, there wasn't really any conferences or anything like that. So some of that work starting to come back, and and what I realised is I was a gun for hire for for quite a long time. So that drew my attention and focus away from, I guess, Commando Steve or the Get Commando Fit brand. So just putting time and energy into growing that. And um, you know, surrounding myself with some uh, with some good people, and 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 helping those 
um, in the industry, you know, mentoring them. Because I've realized that a lot of um, a lot of young trainers they they pay a lot of money to do their courses, and, and you know, it's, it's a tick in the box. Mm-hmm. And then they get um, funneled off to, and they work in gyms and things like that, and they got to pay a lot of money to work. But but what have they really learned? And um, you're providing maybe a service that um, that helps them to further their career and and um, you understand the ins and outs a little better. I think is um, is is what I'd like to uh, like to do. And again, kids, you know, again, I, I think I've got a wealth of knowledge and helping to impart that um, into our children and encourage them to to be more mindful of their health and well being from an early age um, sets them up for uh for life that is definitely so important and you you certainly do have a wealth of knowledge and we've heard that in this podcast so thank you for sharing that with us um but with the kids and with yourself Mm. as a younger person what's a piece of advice that you wish you could go back and tell your young young commando steve oh (laughs) young commando steve um just be kinder to myself Mm. yeah it's um I guess we get so many mixed messages every day, and um, a lot of us, a lot of a lot of people, really struggle with um, their own the perception of themselves, and we beat ourselves up unnecessarily, and um, yeah, we 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 grow up um, constantly having to, or, or, or this idea that we have to push against things. It's I guess as adults and those that drive, it's like driving in traffic. That's you know that that, that, that there's um it's heavy traffic and there's that, that it's that toing and froing and that stop and that starting compared to being out in the, on the open road and just cruising along. You know we all want to be on that open road cruising and just you know taking in our surroundings rather than constantly concerned about whether they're going to run into someone or someone's going to run into us and the like and. Um, yeah, I think we can. If we all work together, we can. We life can be a little more like that, and um, we can focus on the things that are actually important, rather than creating a lot of unnecessary unrest. I love that. Great place to finish, uh, Steve. Thank you so much. It's been such a great conversation. You've got so much wisdom and, um, yeah, I've learned a lot from it. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Oh, thanks, so, guys. Thank you uh, for being on. Can um, Where can people follow you? Tell us. Um, um, so Instagram, Commander Steve, uh, Facebook, you know, Commander Steve as well. Where, where else is there? Your There's website? Twitter, what's your website? And uh, the website is commandersteve.com. Amazing. And you yeah. do um, boot camps and whatnot? Yeah, so boot camps, personal training, you know, corporate work. I used to run a lot of camps, but again, it's um, it's one of those things, I think, as we come back to maybe, as we say, some level of normality mm-hmm. and we can kind of be you know, in groups and, you know, travel interstate and, and the like a little more freely that they'll um, that they'll come back. Amazing. And if you've liked the podcast, please rate us on Apple Podcasts. We truly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, uh, on Apple Podcasts, and then at Tropeka. That's our company. You should know it on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, all over the web. We'll see you guys in episode 14. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Steve.